Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, thank you, Jesus. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? A lot in my heart to share with you today. Say, Father, I demand from you right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, our team scripture, Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. I'll read it again. And now, Lord, behold, they are threatened. Cabo Sapan Telekra Ida Askobai. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. That's the essence. Oh, oh, dear Lord Jesus. I, I remember John Knox. If you've read the story of John Knox, John Knox was a Protestant preacher. And, and you know then you, you had the Roman Catholic Church and then you had the Protestants. Now in, in Europe, the Protestant movements began to gain ground. And if you, if you know history, that's how America was discovered. Because the Protestants were running away from persecution from the Catholic Church, okay? And so they decided to go into the sea and just go, and then they discovered this land. So the, the modern America, according to history, what came to light. Now, not because people were not living there. Of course, they met the Red Indians there. But see, these people came in because they were looking for a land where they can freely express their faith okay now these are this is history this is not make-believe story so there was a man named john knox in scotland he, he was born in scotland from scotland and in that season there was the queen mary who was a catholic and they called her bloody mary why because she she had a hand in persecuting the protestants then because she was the queen and then of course she was the head of the church also so but then she made a statement a popular statement attributed to her she said i fear the prayers of john knox more than all the assembly of the european army what a thing for the queen to say concerning one man what do you think how do you think she got to know about the prayer of john knox boldness boldness he was a not um, not hard nuts to crack boldness i look at nigeria our nation and i don't think in modern day we have nigeria as a nation had seen the kind of boldness please understand when i say this and i mean it i've been praying about this i've been researching on this i don't think after late at bishop benson in Dahusa, i don't think nigeria as a nation and even with at bishop benson in Dahusa, i don't think it got into full maturity the way god wanted it to okay maybe to an extent, maybe in certain circles, we, we, we've had testimonies, you know, how he wants to use a stadium. And then they tell him, sorry, the, the Nigerian national team want to play in that stadium. And he will insist, okay. But beyond that, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at how do we get our nation transformed? Now we look at the nonsense of leader, the nonsense going on in our leadership. If you don't see the nonsense going on, you look at corruption spilling everywhere. You look at all these things so much so that even the church, the church you can say is corrupt. Why do I say that? If a member of your church becomes a governor, automatically everybody around you will say, wow, you have blown. Why would they say you have blown? More money coming to you. From where? From state funds. 
everybody's expected everybody's expecting that now that you have a member that is a governor he should be bringing state funds to you but is that true is that supposed to be so it's not about having your member as the governor it's about how your member became the governor or the minister or the president whatever how did your member now we are not just talking about having someone who's on our side i think that thing even delays or, or or waters down our faith maybe we have not really in the north yes to an extent okay now please permit me to say this majority of crisis we have in the north is not really religious crisis it's actually ethnic crisis yeah, we don't, we've not really faced. Now, in the midst of ethnic crisis, most many times we want to list it with religious crisis, okay? So, because a certain ethnic group is predominantly Christians, and then there is this ethnic group that is trying to attack them, and they are predominantly Muslims. But truly, they are not attacking them for the gospel that they preach. They are attacking them for their ethnicity. And then we, 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 want, we see this group want to overtake these people for economic reasons. Okay, That's not persecution. And because that has not been made clear, even the church have not been able to stand in faith where that is concerned. Okay? Yeah, because if we don't understand the situation, we, we will never understand why because people why is god failing us why is god failing us until we decide and tell ourselves the truth this is an ethnic issue and let's deal with it as it is not trying to rope god into it when the church was being persecuted they were persecuted for the gospel that they preach when in europe they were persecuting the protesters they were put they were persecuting them for the message that they preach okay yes it was not a an ethnic thing now all the the reform reformations that took place in in europe in in the in the 40s in the ninth, ninth sorry um in the 14 or 15th century to the 17th century good study that history you will see plain persecution and in the midst of that you see the power of god was reigning now many still made their mistakes so i'm speaking concerning our nation nigeria and i'm, I'm thinking i said when is election time you see people prophesy oh this one will be that one will be this one will be but you see we haven't seen a clear cut demonstration of the hand of god in our nation we haven't no we haven't oh what about the case of yaradua I, it, it's you see a testimony is a testimony the fact that a man died and it looked like christian became governor i don't i don't count that a real solid testament now god may have used that to about certain things no doubt but i'm talking about where the by by the action or by the result of such testimony the fear of god will come on the nation we haven't gotten that yet we haven't gotten that yet and that's because even the church is not united on that part we are not can we say we have gotten a leader in this country that was established by god guess what we'll sit down there and argue god does not involve himself in those matters people choose who they want to choose you say that when you hear those kind of arguments you would now discover how disorganized our minds are. So what should the church do? The first place is prayer. Prayer to know the mind of God. 
And if we genuinely pray, God will tell us his mind. And then when we know the mind of God, then what do we do? Boldness. Exercise boldness. Trust in the spirit of God. But you see, if you don't know the mind of God, then you don't even know what, what boldness to, to, to exercise. You don't know. If we just think, oh, God, give us good leaders. God, give us good leaders. You still don't know the mind of God. But when you know the mind of God, and that's what has been touting us as a nation, the mind of God has not been revealed in clear terms. Someone can say, oh, God revealed to me that this person is president. God revealed to me that this person is president. It doesn't mean we know the mind of God yet. But listen to me. There is a move that is coming. You, you, you know, we, we read in Daniel. Daniel spoke about the, the... You know, sometimes when you read these prophecies, you lock your mind based on what you have been told Oh, Daniel saw the prophecy of different reigns of kingdom. And then there was a stone that no hand. And then now you're looking at the Persian rule. What about in Nigeria? You don't think that prophecy will be fulfilled? He was not just speaking of the uh, um, Persian and, and new. Uh, uh, that's not all. He was, listen, the same thing can happen in your family. That scripture can be fulfilled. That prophecy can be fulfilled in your family. That scripture can be fulfilled in your own community. That there is a rain that will come. Like that stone where nobody will see the hand. But then it will crash everything that have ever existed. And then it will grow into something that cannot be compared to any. That same prophecy, I speak by the Spirit of God, will be fulfilled in Nigeria. You know, when, when we talk about there is, there is a Nigeria that will come. And that corruption will be a thing of the past. We say it in prophecy. But then we don't take hold of it. There are people God is raising with boldness. Brothers and sisters. And I pray to God. I'll see this in my generation. That men will fear the Lord in this nation. Men will fear the Lord in this nation. By reason of the kind of book I, I told you Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego stood against the king of King Nebuchadnezzar that they were not disrespectful to him I told you that they couldn't bow to that idol because God have already commanded them not to bow to any graven image bowing to that idol will mean disobeying God so they decided to stand with God and allow God to protect them Meanwhile, God wanted to save the king, Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, you don't know that. The glory of God will be expressed in our nation, Nigeria. I know. I know. I know. It will surprise, not just surprise. I'm not talking about a surprise that, how, wow, how did this happen? The kind of surprise that will cause fear in the hearts of men. To fear God. Not only people should be afraid of God or people should fear God though. There is repercussion. Ah, you see, there is, there is a work that God will do in our nation. It, it must happen for a testimony. Yes. I've seen, I've seen something close to that happen before. Many, many years ago. I was a young man then. In my state. But I, I keep praying to the Lord. I say, Lord, you can do this on a national scale. You can do this on a national scale. Brothers and sisters, there is a boldness that we are expected to walk in. Maro sepere tequila. Mar I, I, I said it. We are not really doing business with God. You see, all this selfish thing we do. My church is the best. My church, we 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 teach good. We ha ah, kaboske break. Listen, until we begin to affect society, we are not doing right. 
Affecting society is not gathering people, come to one football field and we'll give you rice, we'll give you clothes, we'll give you... We are not doing enough. We give them rice, they still go home, they finish eating that rice. The government officials are still corrupt. Don't you know, I call by right of me. Uh, the Lord was telling me this, this morning. The Lord said to me, he said, you know, I call. You know, God said, Jesus said to Peter, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose will be loosed in heaven. Now that also means whatever you disallow will be disallowed. Whatever you allow will be allowed. And the Lord was saying to me that if the church allows corruption, then heaven will allow corruption in our nation. Mm -hmm. If the church disallows corruption, then heaven would disallow corruption. Our nation is the way it is because the church have allowed corruption. What does it mean to allow corruption? It's not like just, hey, it's good to be corrupt, though. you don't know. No. If we okay it, that people can steal money and donate to church projects, and it's okay, we bless them. We have allowed it. Now, what does it mean we have allowed it? We have chosen that as one of the ways that God can bless the church. So when we do that, what happens? Then God okays it. Oh, you don't know? Yes, he okays it. Because we okayed it here on earth. So we have, we have opened that door as one of the doors that it's okay for God to bless us with. Guess what's going to happen? It will multiply. It will multiply. But if we disallow that, I said, no, this is wrong. Take back your money and serve the people. I give you three days to repent. If not, you will be dethroned from that seat. Guess what will happen? God will find more righteous means to prosper and bless the church. And guess what's going to happen to the nation? He will deal with the nation and those people that are corrupt. The reason, Diana, you know, you know, why? You know, sometimes people ignorantly, I, I pray you understand, people ignorantly speak and say, look at China. China, they are not Christians, but look at how disciplined they are. Look at uh, look, Dubai. It, it, do you know the Christians in China? Do you know the quality of Christians in China? Even though, even if they are five, if their light is the true light, the nation will feel the impact. Oh, you don't understand. The church in China can be a church of a hundred people. But if their light is perfect, brothers and sisters, the nation will be perfect. So what you see in the nation, so, so the fact that we have millions of people as Christians in Nigeria, every Sunday morning, millions of people go to church, doesn't mean we carry light. What is the quality of light that we carry? That's what we should look at. What did Jesus say? If the light that is in you becomes darkness, how great is that darkness? So if we pray and say, God bless us, God bless us, God bless us, then a corrupt man wakes up and comes and say, ah, pastor, I, I want you to come and pray for me. And then you go and then he bless, blesses you. And then he gives you money. You don't even want to question. Ah, thank you, sir. But is this money clean? You don't even want to question it because there are many projects in your head that wants to be, ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even when your heart is telling you something is wrong with this money. Ah, no, Lord. <laughs> you now even come by after all, eat the riches of the Gentiles. Then proclaim that that person is a Gentile. I tell him.
what we allow is what heaven is allowed. Heaven allows. And because heaven allows it, God cannot judge even the outside, the, the nation. He can't judge. If you're waiting for God to judge and yet you allow what you want God to judge, He will never come to judge. And we'll remain in this state. But I told you, there is a season and that season is very near. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we bless you. Your true light is shining. Your true light is shining. It will be made manifest before our eyes. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.